Katrina's Creations. This is episode 73, and I have got so many things to share with you this week. It has been an exciting and fun week. We have a yarn giveaway going on. We have a trip to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival to share. One of our viewers went there and graciously sent us some pictures. Um, I have some, some news that's exciting to me. Um, and we have a huge pattern discount that I'm going to offer today as well. So let's get started. I have a finished object. I hadn't even, I don't think I even had shown this to you last week. Um, I knitted a kerchief cowl. It is attached in the back. Let me show you. It's just simply overlapped here and then just sewn. So it looks like a shawl type of cat, um, type of the, the kerchief type of shawl that you wrap around so that the point is in the front, but you don't have all of the bulk around the back of your neck. And this is knitted with, in fact, I think I did show it to you last week because I talked about the yarn, which is Liney Online 362 Danita. And does it have a colorway? Don't believe it lists the colorway, but this is the, the cobalt blue. And it is 100% cotton. And I knitted this to enter it into two knit alongs, but I also wrote the pattern up. I'm in the process of. If you just saw me look over, we just had another nor'easter hit up here. I live in Pennsylvania. We got about a foot and a half of snow over the last two days, and the wind just whipped into the house, and I heard snow drop off the side. So um, if you hear crashing and things going on, it's snow coming off of my roof. Um, but anyway, more about this this um, cowl. I did write the pattern. I'm in the process of knitting it up a second time and then having somebody look over it for typos, and then it is going to be released on my Ravelry page. But it starts out at the top here with some garter, and then it goes to some little open dots. And it has a center section down here with yarn overs. And then it has a ribbing section. And then it has some eyelet sections. This is not decorative. This is actually, I do know I showed this to you last week, because this is where I was at last week. So that's my progress keeper. So I did show this to you last week. It's been that crazy, but we can remember what I've shown you and what I haven't. And then the bottom is seed stitch, and then it has this optional pico edging right here that you can see. I like the pico edging because I like lacy stuff. So let me show you what it looks like. It's going to look great against my green shirt, but oh well. So it just slides on. Like I said, you end up with the kerchief look without all the bulk. So let me back up so you can see it a little bit better. So here's how it lays. And I like the ruffle detail. I'll get a little closer so you can see it. So there it is. I don't have a name for it yet. I'm still working on that. But I like it. It's lightweight. And I do like the fact that because it's light in the back here, there's not a lot of chunky bulkiness to it because that's great in the winter time, but to wear something in the summertime, I don't want a whole lot around my neck, but I like the decoration of the kind of the shawl look hanging in the front. So yes, that pattern will be coming soon. Now let me tell you some works in progress that I've got going on. It was an exciting week all the way around between the blizzard where I missed a day of work. Um, or the nor'easter. Like I said, we got a foot and a half of snow, so my work, of course, was canceled yesterday. Everything was canceled yesterday. And uh, then on Monday, we had a fire in my building, so I got sent home early. Um, I work in a unique place. I, I work for a public library, and the library itself was built where a old Catholic church used to be down in, in the town. And um, the Catholic Church had rebuilt up the up the road some, and the old church was standing there, and the steeple over the years had fallen down through the center of the building. And, I mean, there's a cemetery in the back of our library, because that was where the cemetery was for the church. 
And it's, I've walked through it before, and it's kind of neat. There's a Revolutionary War soldier buried there. So um, that's kind of neat. But the old rectory where the priests live, they did not tear down when they built the new library. It's actually been modernized and incorporated into the new building. So um, the rectory is the section where my office is, and apparently one of the boilers in the basement had some kind of a transformer blow or something like that. But anyway, it was more smell than anything else, but the smell went up through the, the back stairs of the building. So they sent us home early on Monday because of the transformer -y electrical smell that was in there. I mean, it was, really wasn't that bad. They were airing it out, but, you know, it was it was there. You could smell it. So, yeah, so that was my exciting, exciting week of, of like, no work. I only worked a half a day this week. So I had lots of time to get some knitting done. So this is my Drakenfells, and this is a pattern by Melanie Berg. And I've shown it before, but in case you are a new viewer, and we have lots and lots of new viewers, and thank you for that. I do appreciate all of you who have, are stopping by and checking out. There we go. There's lots of pictures for the pattern, but I wanted to show you one where it's all the way opened up so you could see it really well. This is Drakenfels. And I like Melanie Berg's patterns. They're always really well written. And I enjoy them. I've got two of them. I would probably enjoy getting more of them, but that's what I have so far. And here is my Drakenfels. You can see here where I was last week. And I've knitted up through here. I'm at the longer section. I'm coming down to the final striping section for this it starts at this end, and this is like the dragon's tail. Drakenfels is means dragon's hill in German. I'm probably totally mispronouncing it. So this the second half of the shawl is all different stripings between the it's a three color shawl. Um, you can see the third color right here. So I have these main two, and then this third color, and then the section I'm getting ready to go into will be this kind of variegated and this color, which are these two yarns together. And these are Hawthorne by Knit Picks, I believe. And the bag it's living in is a Birdie and Poppet bag. And the other yarn that I'm using, this purple, is an alpaca. It is so soft. This whole shawl is really, really soft. Um, so I enjoy, you know how much I love purple, so I'm going to enjoy it. So that's my one project that I've been working on. And then I've been working on my Keeping You in Stitches shawl, which is a shawl that I designed. Here is a picture of it. It's a four-color shawl. I've done it in the four colors. Uh, which you can see here. I've done it in a variegated color, uh, which was actually purple and gray, very similar to the color I just showed you. So my daughter is actually getting that one for Christmas. And not the Drakenfels, but the gray, uh, the keeping you in stitches that's in the gray and the purple. And then this one I'm doing in a solid color, and I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it for myself or if I'm going to give this to my sister-in-law. So last week, let's see if I can find my progress. Here's my progress keeper. Here's where I was. No, I lost it again. Here we go. Here's where I was last week. So I have knitted up through that whole section and I'm up into this section now here, which are like little pillars. So it's different lace sections. There's 10 sections all together. The first section is actually garter stitch, but because I'm doing it in a solid color, I just threw some eyelets in. And this color is a yarn from Craftsy. This is Cloudborn, um, and its color is Caribbean or Caribbean, depending on how you pronounce it. And this is my second skein, and you can see I'm partway through it. So this is the entire shawl so far. And I'm on section six, I believe. 
So that is that project that I have going on. Then we have the poncho. Now, last week I had asked you, or the week before, I guess, I had asked you, what should I do with the, the sleeves of this uh, poncho? Because it actually had the sides sewn only part way down. It was supposed to be, sides were supposed to be partially open. We all kind of, general consensus was we all thought that those sides should be closed. Um, and then one of my viewers, Yoka, had said, what if you close it all the way except for just a small enough slit for your hands to go through so that you could make it kind of more snuggly close to you if you wanted to keep it close and keep your arms warm, which I thought was a great idea. So this is a pattern which I've shown numerous times, but in case you're new, I will tell you, this was a cat, it was from the Katia website, and this is their poncho. This is knitted with two skeins of Katia paint. It is an acrylic yarn. And it is in autumn colors. And it's knit sideways. So it's actually knit like on the bias. And the original pattern does not have this ribbing at the top. I put that on just because I thought it looked more finished. So I'm going to model it now with the finished sleeve so you can see what it looks like. And here it is with the finished sleeves, which I like much, much better than the split sleeves. And then if I want to put my arms into these holes, you can see I've got them right here. I can just slide my hands in, and that way it stays closer to my body if I want to, and kind of moves with me, which I really, I actually like better because it keeps the flappiness from getting in the way. I have bat wings of my own. I don't need to add extra. So, um, yeah, I kind of, I like being able to put my hands through here. I think if I'm wearing this at work or something, it will keep the, the edges from getting in the way. So I actually like that the way it is. The next thing I was going to show you, I did have someone ask me about how I block my shawls. Now, a lot of you left questions for week number one of our yarn giveaway, and I am going to be answering some of those questions I did answer um, as I kind of looked through your comments. I do stick a heart next to everybody's comments so you know that I have read them um, and so that I can keep track of who I've read and that I have entered you into the giveaway. Um, but some of those questions I answered right away. Other ones I'm going to answer at a further date because um, I just thought that would be kind of interesting to have a little chat and to answer some of your questions. But one that was mentioned was how do I block my shawls? Now, I do have blocking boards, and I'll be honest, I did not spend a lot of money for my blocking boards. I went to um, a toy store, and I bought, you could go to Walmart, you could go to any of these, and I bought the little puzzle squares. They're like a foot by a foot, and they snap together, and they're that same material that you use for, that you would go and, and maybe buy from some of these craft places. It's the same exact thing, and I think I paid three dollars for a bundle of about six or seven. So sometimes I will stack them end and end, and mine because they came from a toy store have cute little rubber duckies in the middle of them and all kinds of little puzzle critter, critters in the middle, but be that as it may, it does the job. Um, sometimes I do block my shawls on the blocking boards, but some of my shawls are actually longer or deeper than the number of, of little blocks that I have in the blocking boards. So sometimes I hang them in my laundry room and I stretch them out across the shelf in my laundry room and I hook them with clothes pins and then I weigh them down um, to, to pull out the points. Like for instance with this, if I was to block this and I wanted to emphasize these edges or some shawls will have points along the edges of them and you want to pull those out when you block them so that they show up more, that's where I use weights. And I am going to insert a picture of what the weights are because I made them. Now, if you could see in that picture, they are basically an earring, one of the wire earring backs that you can get at any department store, any big box store, uh, Hobby Lobby, uh, Joann's, Michael's, any of those places, um, any of them carry them. They're just in the jewelry finding. You can get them on eBay as well. I basically attached fishing weights to them. I bought the fishing, well actually I raided my husband's fishing tackle box because he doesn't fish anymore so he said I could have them. Um, but they're fishing 
they're just fishing weights that attach to your fishing rod and they already have a little loop in them and I just attached them with the jump ring which is just a little ring that's like kind of split and I just opened them up then I slid the weight on one side and the earring back on the other and then pushed them back shut again and it works great because it's not real real hard to to attach them you just basically slip them any place you want and the points you want bigger I use the heavier weights with so um yeah it was something it was cheap it was simple to make you could probably make a set of them for oh I don't know under ten dollars maybe so just a cheap solution I like cheap you know me it's kind of planted on my forehead uh, but anyway so that being said I also have some other exciting news to share with you I have become an affiliate for Knit Crate and for Craftsy. Now what that means is I will put um, down in the description box down below, you'll see it says show more or read more or whatever, you click that and you'll see links. You'll see links to my Facebook page, you'll see links to my Pinterest page, um, to my Ravelry patterns, to the Ravelry group. You'll also see links to Knit Crate and you'll see them to Craftsy. Uh, if you click on those links and were to subscribe to a subscription box like Knit Crate is, here's my Knit Crate box, it comes weekly subs or monthly subscription. If you were to subscribe, and they they have all different types of pa packages you can choose from for Knit Crate. Um, the one I get is called the membership box and I get two skeins of yarn a month and it's $24.99 and that includes your shipping. And it includes a pattern, a crochet pattern, and a knitting pattern. So if you were to get a subscription and you clicked through the link that I have to get it, it means I get a commission basically out of it. So um, you don't have to use that, but if you do want to get a subscription and you click through mine, I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, Craftsy is offering the same type of thing. And then Craftsy has a special sale running right now that I thought I would share with you because it is a pretty good sale. Um, it's only running for this weekend, so it is running from March 22nd until March 25th. So by the time you all see this on Saturday, you'll only have uh, two days to act on it. Uh, but anyway, they are offering 60% off of quilt, knit, and crochet kits um, and supplies. Or it's, and it's up to, I'm sorry, it's not... All of them are not 60%, it's up to 60%, so just make sure you really watch if you order something because it's an up to 60% off. And again, that sale is running with them from the 22nd until the 25th of March 2018. And the link to that special deal is also down below. So if you're interested, you can click through and look and see what, what crafts they have, what kits they have available. Uh, like I said, it is quilting, crochet, and knitting kits up to 60% off. So, I have that. Then I ordered something else off of eBay. It hasn't come in yet, and it was actually cheap. I think I spent $12. I was watching another podcast, and I'm trying to remember. I think it was Christine Kelly's podcast. I'm not sure don't remember exactly what podcast it was I was watching, but I saw this neat little machine and thought that would be fun to have. It's like a little sock knitting machine, but it knits I-cord. Now, if you're not familiar with what I-cord is, it is knitting that is done in a very tight tube. So um, think like ties on a hat. Like if you've knitted or crocheted a hat and you want to attach ties to it, those are a lot of times done in I-cord. You usually have to do them on double-pointed needles, and it's like three or four stitches, and you just keep going around and around and around and around. It takes forever. I avoid I-cord because it takes forever to do. Uh, you could use it on a knitted or crocheted pocketbook for the handles. Um, you could group them together for like a real bushy-looking pom-pom. You can do all kinds of things with it. You can put it on the edges of blankets to have a more finished edge to it. Um, anyway, I happened to see that they had this little I-cord knitting machine, and it's basically, uh, it, it's like this big. It's tiny and has a little crank, and it knits around the center, and then the yarn 
um, knits into the fabric and it drops down through the bottom. When we were kids, if you're about my age, now I'm 55, when I was a kid, I had a, what was called a spool knitter, and it was basically a wooden, like a wooden um, tube, and it had nails around the top, and you would loop the yarn around and around, and it you would have this tube that would come out through the bottom of the spool. That's I-cord. It's also known as idiot cord. That's what the I-cord stands for. Um, I don't know why, but that's what it is. So um, it's sort of the same thing as little spool knitters, except it does it by crank, so it goes much faster. So when that comes, <clears throat> excuse me, when that comes in, I will, after I read the instructions and figure it out, I will do a demonstration and show it to everybody else. Um, so we'll, we'll hope it isn't one of those don't let this happen to you type of moments <laughs> that it actually uh, will work, but it looked like it would be fun and interesting to try. So yeah. So I did that. That was another exciting thing that I got this week. And now I'm going to insert um, some footage from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I would love to be able to say that I was there, but I wasn't. Um, however, one of our viewers, Sarah, lives in Scotland, and she told me ahead of time she was going to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And she graciously, gracious, graciously, get it out yet. She graciously took some pictures for us and then sent those to me and told me what the pictures are of. So I put all the footage together and I'm going to let it roll here and we can all enjoy it. Thanks to Sarah. recommends. Uh, I have a book that I used to demonstrate the Tunisian crochet that was shown last week. Someone asked me, do I have a book that I use for this? And I do. There are several books that are out, but this is it's called Learn to Do Tunisian Lace Stitches. Um, it has a DVD included. It is by Kim Guzman, and it has some beautiful patterns in it show you the back here. I really like this. But it has several patterns that you can make. So if I can get this without the glare. Like there's this really pretty capelet. And there's the DVD. Let's see if I can show you some of the other patterns. I think there's like 23 maybe patterns in here. Here's some. And some on this side. Sorry for the glare today with this with the snow outside. It's really bright in this room. Um, yeah, there's like little swatches of all different types of patterns that are in here. And then it shows you how to use those patterns and put them together um, to form different um, projects in the back. And here's that cape legion and I think it's really, really pretty. And see if I can find some other ones. They have a, a tote. 
like a shop shopping market bag. And there's a scarf and a hat. I'm not too much into that. Don't think I'd like that on my head. But anyway, looks nice on the model, but just not something I would wear. And then there's a wrap. So it has lots of um, lots of different patterns to make out of it. So again, it is called Learn to Do Tunisian Lace Stitches by Kim Guzman. So that is one recommend. And then I have two viewers who are also uh, their new podcasters. And I know we have a lot of um, crocheters that watch the channel. Um, there is a new one. It is called Crochet by Starlight. She does a lot of um, demonstration. So, um, and she does some really nice tutorials. So check her out. Again, it is called Crochet by Starlight. The other one, if you were interested in learning more about the Tunisian crochet, there is a channel it's called Tunisian Crochet World. So check that one out as well. Again, those are both new podcasters, and give them a check out. Go, go take a, a look and, and see if you like them. Um, I thought they were very interesting, and they both did a good job. And, yeah, so anyway, those would be my recommends for this week. Now, I have noticed that a lot we've gotten a lot of new viewers, and a lot of you are crocheters. I'm a very basic crocheter. I do have yarn to make a um, granny, not a granny square blanket, but a granny stripe blanket. I have the yarn for that, um, except it's not going to be randomly striped like so many of the granny striped blankets are. I, I like things very organized, <laughs> and I want to make sure I can use the yarn, and it's going to be all balanced. So I'm going to show you the yarn I'm going to use, but... I've decided I need to up my crochet and learn a little bit more. So I actually have had this book for a long time. It's called How to Crochet by Pauline Turner. I This is an old library book that was discontinued. They, they sold it at the book sale, and I, I got it. Uh, so it teaches basic crochet. So I do know how to do, like, single crochet, double crochet, triple crochet, but that's about it. I can do granny squares, and I can do stripes back and forth. I have done a shell pattern, but one thing I run into problems with with crochet is one en one side ends up straight, the other side ends up kind of doing wonky things. So I am hoping to do better. So I thought since we have a lot of crocheters that are now watching the podcast, I'm going to try to add a little crochet to to my world. So let me show you the yarn I'm going to use for my um, for my granny stripe blanket. All right, here is the yarn. I can't hold all of this up at once, but we have colors based around the fall colors, and this is Red Heart Soft, and it is. Does it have color? This is all. This is all worsted weight. This is called Garden. So you can see the colors. There you go. You can see that a lot better. So to go with that, I have this gold, and this is Patton's Canadian. And then I have this rust, which is Patton's Astra. And I have Karen Simply Soft in this green. I don't think it has a color. It's called Dark Sage. Then I have Red Heart Super Saver, and that's in brown. And I have another Patents Canadian in a maroon, and another Patents Canadian in a brown. And it's kind of getting washed out. Brown. And a Karen Simply Soft in a tan. So those are the stripes I'm going to be putting together for this. And I have a crochet hook that has a light on the end. I feel like E.T. I could phone home with it. It's just 
I guess it's for crocheting in the dark, but if I have to get up in the bathroom in the middle of the night, I could light my crochet hook and find my way. Yeah. Anyway, I don't think I'll be needing the light on the end of the crochet hook. You've heard of light at the end of the tunnel? I have one at the end of my crochet hook. So, someone else asked me, do I knit with a lot of acrylic? Um, you would think so, looking at what I'm just showing you. But I tend to, most of my yarn that I have is wool or cottons. Um, I use acrylic when I'm making blankets or something that's going to get washed a lot. Then I'll tend to use acrylics. So, now we are on to the giveaway. Here is the yarn. This is the giveaway. It is a Nordless Viking yarn from Norway. It is a 100 gram ball, 300 meters or 385 yards. And the color, it's just a number, it's 965. And it is a 75% super washable, 25% nylon. And it's got gorgeous colors. And those are pretty true to form right there. So it is a single, yeah, it's a single ply. And in order to enter this, the first week, you had to uh, click the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and write a question. Last week, you had to click the subscribe button if you hadn't already, give me a thumbs up, and tell me what you were making. This week, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, give me a thumbs up, and then tell me what your favorite weight of yarn is to knit. So it could be worsted, fingering, whatever. Tell me what your favorite weight of yarn is. So that's what you have to do to enter this week. The giveaway will end um, on April 5th, and I will do the announcement that Saturday. I think that's April 7th. All right. Yes, April 7th. So that's when I will announce the winner for the giveaway. In the meantime, I wanted to share share a little with you guys because I really appreciate everybody who's participating. So I'm offering a pattern discount. Now I wrote a pattern years ago, well last year actually, called the Banner Unfurled. This is the original, it's a small shawl pattern. So it's not real deep. It kind of goes just around your neck, but it is long. This is the original one. It is a three color shawl and it has beads in it. That's what these little dots are. These are little pearl beads. And I initially designed this pattern for myself because patriotic holidays, I had nothing patriotic to wear. So I did this in the red, white, and blue. But you can do this in sports colors. You can do it in any colors you want. And I've knitted this several times. So I also have knitted it in this color. This is in a kind of a beigey gray and a turquoise and then a variegated turquoise. And there you can see the beads again. I'll hold it back here. I made this for my daughter-in-law in blue, for my daughter in pink, and for my mother in um in a red and a brown. So I'm going to insert those three pictures so you can kind of see what they look like done in different colors. And now for the pattern discount. Uh, if you go over to my Ravelry group, and again the link is down below, and you look at the banner unfurled and decide that you would like it. Uh, before you complete the purchase, type in KC50, and that will give you 50% off. It's normally a $4 pattern, and that would get you the pattern for $2. So um, it's only going to be on sale for this week, so it will be over by next Saturday. So it's only running from this Saturday, uh, which is the 24th until next Saturday, which would be the 31st. So, um, that again, it runs from March 24th until March 31st, 2018. And if you put that coupon code in, it will give you 50% off. So, and 
please make sure you get the coupon code in because it's very difficult for me to try to refund if you mess it up and don't put it in there. Um, I have to pay different fees and stuff through PayPal to correct that. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so that is it for this week. I thank you all for tuning in, and I will see you again next week, and we will have um, some more information, maybe a little bit more detail with some crochet. I think I might show some of my grandmother's crocheted doilies next week, which I have shown before, but I'll talk about them a little bit more. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again next Saturday.